just to give you a little bit of background on where we are today, uh, we are heading to the Hirschfield Lead Mine in Glen Elg, Nova Scotia, Guysboro County. A little bit of a backstory on this one, a personal backstory. Me, your humble narrator, I was in this mine over a couple decades ago when I was quite young, when it was wide open and not very well known, I guess. Explored it with some friends with some flashlights and, and whatnot. Uh, my initials are actually carved in a piece of wood at the end of this mine, or at least we left them there over two decades ago. But the reason we haven't been to this mine in the last two seasons or summers of this channel is because we've known uh, from the beginning that this, this particular mine had a bat grate put over it by the province, the Department of Natural Resources, uh, sometime back in, I don't know, 2009, 2010, 2011, not entirely sure, but it's been like that and therefore it was uh, totally inaccessible. There, we, Therefore we didn't want to waste our time by coming all this way down here and deep back into the woods to uh, try and attempt an episode. It's something we can't even get into. So the reason this changed and suddenly we're here is because we had some subscribers to the channel send us some photos and intelligence that were showing us that, hey, it's, it's actually not barred. You should come because they have some uh, removable accoutrements on it uh, for, I guess, what seems to be the bat studies people, just like at Lake Charlotte. Uh, they put some uh, some removable tooling there, so there could be limited access with the right tools. And we were shown photos and all this, and it looks plausible, so that's where we're headed. We're prepared for that outcome. Uh, we hope that uh, what we saw was real, and uh, we're gonna be there shortly, so uh, let's see what happens. All right, we're here, we're parked, and this is the Hirschfield site right alongside the St. Mary's River on back on this old mine road um, in Glen Elg. The boys are heading up here up the cliff to uh, the second level that's uh, up there. But we'll come over here and have a look, um, show you the lay of the land. The, uh, the site is marked. The, uh, the, Hirschfield ledge, led, heh, the Hirschfield Lead Project. And this is kind of a worn sign at this point, but there is all your stats. Um, discovered in 1873. Uh, she's an old girl. Last worked in 1931. So this has been derelict almost a century, but definitely uh, the mine itself is over a century old. And it's a lead mine. Total length of the adit here is reported to be 230 meters. So that uh, for you folks with imperial measurements, that's around 660 feet. Okay, here's looking up the cliff, and this is what we're dealing with. This is the, uh, the rock pile coming down from the mouth, and right up there through the bushes, you might be able to see the bars already. Earlier there, when I showed you the boys heading up the cliff, they're heading to the upper level. But this is the mouth to the, you know, the main mine. Um, and here is the uh, the bat grate over it. And, uh, you know, now that we're here, it is uh, kind of a happy moment for us because, of course, there is what the, uh, the intelligence photos provided to us from the subscribers did show us that these, uh, these clamps seem to provide uh, some removable sections here that we'll be utilizing today, and that's what's going to make our entry possible. But this looks like exactly at Lake Charlotte. Um, uh, the bat people must have been here to go in and do some readings or something, and they had to make uh, put in some temporary accoutrements to uh, make that happen. So it looks the same as Lake Charlotte to me. We'll start with, I guess, uh, heading in here and going on the inside. So we'll see you there. Okay, we got all the boys inside the mouth, and uh, here's what we're dealing with. Large stope type entrance, probably a good 12-15 foot ceiling. But we do see that up ahead it, uh, it takes an immediate and quick downhill drop. So we'll go up there where they're at and, and have a look. Here it comes, uh, there's no ladder. There's a ladder, does it go to anything? There's a level up there. Is that a level? 
Okay, folks, looks like we see another direction here. There's the ladder there. Old wooden ladder all dilapidated. And up there, that's probably, I don't know, a good 12 feet up from the ground. So I don't know how we're going to get. Do we, do we have the ladder in the truck? Yep. There should, there should be one in there. All right. Well, if uh, we'll have to consider that on the way out because I'd love to know what's up there. <laughs> but yes, as, as you can tell, folks, the uh, it takes a, a strong dip downhill here. And we hit water. All right, I'm in the water, and we're here looking down, uh, down the mine. And there's some uh, definitely timbering here, old nails, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, on we go. So just to mention again, me, your, your friendly narrator and host, um, there is a, uh, a carved piece of wood at the end of this that has uh, mine and a friend's initials carved into it. And uh, I hope and pray that's up here because that, uh, that's kind of a significant moment for me going back to my youth a couple decades later. So you can see the water level lines on the walls very distinct, where the water probably hasn't gone above that in a long, long time. I do remember it getting dry eventually, so I don't think this is forever, but uh, it's not that the water's too bad now, we're over our boots anyway, but... Uh, you hit ore car tracks. Ore car tracks. Let's have a look. So suddenly uh, it gets much bigger again. We're up to high ceilings, probably uh, 10 foot ceilings or more. So they must have been following a very distinct vein. You can see it looking down through there. The drift now goes on for quite a piece. Amazing. Amazing. Huge in here. Nice echo. A crawl, oh yes, the crawl. And I do remember that, that you know, some ways into the mine, there was a spot where there was a hump in the middle of the drift. And the only way to pass by is to, uh, is to actually go up and over the hump. Is there still a little hole at the top? Wow. Okay, so as you can see here, folks, the, uh, just beyond him, the, the drift uh, is filled almost to the ceiling. Oh, that's much bigger, that hole. <laughs> wow. That's huge compared to what it used to be. I remember crawling through, we could barely squeeze our bodies through it. And here's, a, here's an old pipe. It goes off into the distance there. Must be a dewatering pipe from back in the day. And it is rusty. I always believed this was put here intentionally to, uh, to plug passage to the rest of the mine and then it just slumped over time. But definitely the last two decades of uh, PLOS have done a number on this because that was so small uh, back in the 90s. Somebody's been up here boot prints. Boot prints? Yeah. I wonder if they're mine. So here's at the top of the pile, folks and it continues like so and heads back down again. So just think of a large hump in the middle of the uh, high ceiling tunnel, because this would be normal, this is like the, uh, the 12 foot ceiling or so, so we're really up close to it now and then we're gonna go back down. Now it's a matter of heading down. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Yeah, that's more, uh, that's smaller. 
more like what I remember. But uh, yeah, we can pass by there. Let's keep going. So we're back to some water, eh? Yep. And it looks, you said it was looking deep. Yeah, it's about up where our knees are slightly above. Right okay. Here. Looks like we're going back into deep water, folks. Yep. Okay, here's what we're dealing with, folks. Yeah, that is probably two and a half feet deep at least, but it, uh, it continues down. Oh, that's cold. Yep. We're gonna get cold. Yeah, you're almost up to your crotch. Yup. Almost up to the crotch, folks. All right, I'm gonna go by him here just to take the lead, let you guys get a feel of uh, walking this tunnel. We are in uh, two and a half foot plus water at this point and uh, continuing on. Beautiful mine, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mine. We're in a straight shot now that goes off as far as I can see. This is the first time it stuck, kind of stopped turning and twisting. That's what we're seeing up ahead, folks. All right, let's keep going. Okay, it's starting to get shallower now. Shallow is good. Okay, we're coming up out of the water. Yeah, I'd say we're probably 500 feet now at least. We got a uh, water flow. It's really small through here and it's very square. So we're coming up out of water. Good to see. He is reporting the end. The end is near. Now we need to search for my piece of wood. All right, we are on land, and this is the end. And he is reporting that my piece of wood is down here. No fucking way. And I will put up on the screen, folks, an imposition of this uh, piece of wood that was taken a shot on... Kodak film. There's no digital cameras back then in the early 90s um, of this piece of wood. That is our first name initials of me and my buddy. And that's as much detail as I'm going to give you. <laughs> Incredible. Um, I am taking this home with me <laughs> because this is a full circle moment in my life. This will sit on my mantle in my house. Uh, recovered from its original position and that's exactly where we sat it too. Amazing! There is some uh, rail at my feet here at the end. Just a piece, just one one rail, one bar. 
as with most of the Nova Scotia mines, as we found, it, uh, it's usually taken out, buried, or dissolved in the water, all sorts of different scenarios. But there is one piece left. So here we are back at the uh, entrance, folks, and here's the ladder that we brought in from the truck, um, our trusty extension ladder. We're going to try and get up there to that uh, upper level here, and this will basically be the last thing before we go. Just want to see what's up there. Doesn't look like much, but uh, let's go check. Okay, here we are with it in position. We are going to... Uh, Go up in there and see what we find. Okay, here's looking down the ladder. I'm up at the top. And uh, basically we reach a little level that goes off into the distance right there. That's all it is. Uh, it looks like a collapse. Might have went further, but there's, uh, there's nothing down there. I'm, I'm up here for your benefit to show you the shot. Um, a couple of the other fellows have already been up ahead of me, so that is what we're dealing with up here. We're out and ready to head home now that uh, we're into some nice daylight here. Some closer inspection on this uh, retrieved artifact piece of wood heirloom i'm noticing there are other letters that i should comment on in order to be fully fair there's a great big l there is an e and there looks to be a an s it could be less les um beyond that less if you're watching or les lewis ethel stewart <laughs> if it's initials who knows i have no idea um, yeah, speak up in comments. I got your wood. Well, our wood now. Just to show you, took a clamber up the hill here from the road and the river out there to show you that the second level where the boys went at the beginning is up here. Don't want to miss it before we go. So it's just up the cliff from the main level we were just in. And this is what it looks like. There's a concrete abutment here built into the uh, the rock face. And then there's that little passageway for, I assume, more bats to go in and out. And very distinct uh, crevasse here, you can see where it obviously went in there. Let's take a little closer look. That's probably 12 to 14 inches in diameter with a single bar. And it just goes in there um, to a tunnel that goes immediately to the right, which sends it in this way. Again, which is pointing towards the crevasse. Anyway, that's it from the Hirschfield Lead Project, Lead Mine, here in Glen Elk, Nova Scotia. Bye-bye!